Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching, and sharing the podcast. We've got Jelaine Appling, President Emeritus, Wisconsin Family Council. We're so blessed by all the work she's done through all these years. And I've got a little news update and a little story we want to share when we bring her in. We're going to be talking about elections in Wisconsin coming up. We'll talk about some family issues, uh, some uh, a pro-life story, also some election concerns about what the Democrats are doing to get out the vote. And, you know, that's not just simply getting people to vote, right? It's recruiting Democrats. But we'll talk about that with Jelaine. Let's bring her in right now. Good to see you, sister. Welcome back to Worldview oh. Matters. Good to be with you, David. Always, uh, always an honor. All right. So over at Wisconsin Family Council's Facebook page a, a couple weeks ago, uh, there was an announcement. It says Wisconsin Family Council's new president, Christine File. That's news to our audience. Tell us about that and your transition. Well, thank you. For the last 26 plus years, it's been my honor and my privilege and a very humbling time to lead these organizations um, at Wisconsin Family Council and Wisconsin Family Action. And about two years ago, I told the board that I thought it was time that we start looking for, seriously looking for my successor, that I'd like to step down by the end of 2024 at the latest. So we put into play a nationwide search and lo and behold, we found someone right here in Wisconsin. Um, and it really is a generational change, David. Hmm. Um, she's decidedly younger and, uh, you know, she's married and has children, lives in southeastern Wisconsin. Her name is Christine Files. She has wonderful, wonderful credentials. She's a Hillsdale College graduate. She has a oh, master's. From Regent. Yeah, master's from Regent and a law degree from Regent. So um, as of February 19th, she stepped in as the president and I retain the title of president emeritus by virtue of the board. So I'm going to help every all the way through this transition to make sure that we get her settled and, and ready to go. And then um, I'll slowly step off and out of Wisconsin Family Action and Wisconsin Family Council. But I, I, I will tell you, I'll continue to be doing things that will um, be all about supporting Wisconsin Family Council and Wisconsin Family Action, mm. but also making sure that we get our people out to vote. Mm, amen, and thank you for that. Um, you can tell her that uh, you had me at Hillsdale. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's so good to hear. So uh, it's everything's going to be in good hands, and we'll, we'll eventually get her on, Lord willing. Uh, Worldview Matters on the podcast as well. Um, and before we get to the nonpartisan spring election, April 2nd, what we need to keep an eye out for, Jelaine, um, tell us about the third annual Marriage Hall of Fame. Oh, but, well, first of all, my the credit really goes to my counterpart in Louisiana, Gene Mills. For a number of years, he's put up this Louisiana Hall of Fame, and I've always thought it was brilliant. So I called him three years ago, and I said, Gene, would, would you let me shamelessly plagiarize? And he is so <laughs> gracious. He said, absolutely. You take anything you want and make it yours, Jelaine. And so through Wisconsin Family Council, we we initiated this unique marriage hall of fame for people and couples in Wisconsin who have been married as one man and one woman for 60 plus years. So wow. this is our third year. I know. Isn't that exciting, David? Yes, um, yes. You know, we got a little pushback from a reporter the other day because he said, I found somebody who'd been married longer. Well, this is our Hall of Fame, right? And uh, this year, the pers the couple that's been married the longest that we that applied for induction, 75 years. Oh, my goodness. So what's the Marriage Hall of Fame about? It's all about honoring the institution of marriage mm. by honoring the individual couples who show a marriage that lasts a lifetime can happen. And what a great yeah. example to the next generation, right? Yes, praise God. I see some that on your Facebook page there. They're married in 1949, 1950, 1953. Wow. And a lot, know, lot isn't more. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. yeah. So you guys, yeah, you guys can see that by going on Facebook, Wisconsin Family Council. Just put that up in the search there. And I hope you like the page. Um, but yeah, you can see some of these couples. What a great idea. So uh, hopefully that will continue uh, to be celebrated. All right, Julian, let's get down to the stuff that's not so much fun. The, uh, <laughs> the elections. 
Oh Lord, it seems like it's 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 a never ending cycle. Obviously, in some states, maybe Wisconsin more than others. I don't know, maybe not. But uh, the spring nonpartisan election, April second, and um, man, it's a month away. Um, there are a couple things you're concerned about. Tell us. Well, first of all, I'm concerned about voter turnout for sure. Mm. Okay, because typically our yeah. spring elections are low voter turnout, and what that means is, David, very very bluntly, what that means is the people who do vote in those low voter turnout elections, their vote counts more than it does in a high voter turnout election. Hmm. Local elections, local government, if you will, is the level of government that most directly impacts my life and your life. Yep. It's, they tell us when we take our trash out. They tell us if we have to keep our grass cut, how our school curriculums are going to go and so forth. Eesh. So people need to vote. But there are yeah. also there's no statewide candidate race on the ballot for Wisconsin this April. You know, last year we had a Supreme Court race. Every four years we have a DPI, State Superintendent of Public Instruction. But this year we have a two-question referendum on there that I think people need to know about, especially as you talk about election integrity and election reform. Remember the Zuckerbucks, David? Yes. Remember, <laughs> remember how the millions of dollars came into Green Bay and, uh, and to uh, Milwaukee and Racine and Madison and Eau Claire, the, the really liberal strongholds of municipalities in our state in 2020. So yeah. the first question on our all of our ballots in Wisconsin on April 2nd will be, um, do we want to stop money coming in from the outside so that if it's offered, you can't accept it, you can't go out and ask for it, you can't use it if it's given to you. There's And then the second one re is related to that. Because if you remember, the Zuckerbucks didn't just come with money, they came with people. They brought people in claiming to be experts who had no official status in our elections here in Wisconsin and in these municipalities, plug them into the, the municipalities. Oh, we're here to help. So the second question says that no, no one except an officially recognized election official is allowed to be involved with Wisconsin elections. So a yes vote says, I don't want Zuckerbucks. The second part of it says, I don't want Zucker people. <laughs> and if, that's a yes vote. If you vote no, you say, OK, the Zucker bucks were fine and the Zucker people were fine. So um, people need to know about that. Real quickly, let me give you a very important website, myvote.wi.gov, myvote.wi.gov. Within the next about week and a half, the uh, everyone's ballot will be up. The referendum questions will be up. And school board candidates and mayoral candidates and county board candidates and city council and village and board uh, uh, candidates will all be on there. And people need to check that out to make sure they know what's on that ballot before they go. Knowledgeably, responsibly and prayerfully is how we need to vote as as believers. But by the way, this is all worldview. Yes. <laughs> the, the worldview that 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 uh, impacts being a citizen in this incredible republic that God has yeah. given us. I don't know about you, but I believe God gave us this republic. Yeah, I believe too. Yeah. And, and we have a dual citizenship. The Bible says as Christians, believers, our citizenship is in heaven. But we, while we're here, we are citizens of the United States. And we have, that's a great responsibility. And to not vote, one of the only ways you can have your voice can be heard on so many important issues is irresponsible. Now, we the people have an opportunity to vote on this. And Jelaine was just talking about this website. I want to give it to you again for Wisconsin friends. It is my vote dot wi dot gov did i get that right jelaine you did yep. okay we've seen the horror stories um and maybe this is more the national you know elections in november more than the the nonpartisan ones but but outside money coming from other states and from leftist you know, like George Soros's and the other leftist funds, they're coming into different. We saw it in, in key races in Texas and Georgia. I, we've had it here in Wisconsin when we were they were trying to, you know, get Scott Walker. out. I mean, we had a Supreme Court race several years ago that was I think there was a recount and and all kinds of there was money coming in. Is there a, a difference between this getting money coming in for of uh, the um, nonpartisan election, the, the spring election and the November election, or once we decide, the voters decide on this, is that can also affect November? Well, it will, it would, it won't affect April, but it would affect November. Okay. Because once it goes into play, then, uh, and, and by the way, we know this has already been talked about for November 
these national groups that had these sucker bucks and had these millions and millions of dollars that they were plugging in to liberal bastions. Uh, mm-hmm. We know they're already out there. So yeah. we got to get this passed. Now, just to make a quick distinction for our viewers, ads and things like that, that come in from third parties to support a candidate or support a party or an issue. That's not the kind of money we're talking about. We're talking about money that were give that was given to county clerks to supposedly help them turn out the vote and conduct oh. their election. So that's a very different thing. Yeah. And when I hear that, I'm thinking, OK, who's going to take advantage of that and, and find ways to get out the vote? And it's the left. It's almost always the left because we are so naive oftentimes, not always. But uh, I think we're too um, we give people the benefit of the doubt. And I, I think that comes back to bite us. But um, let's move on, Jelaine. Um, you also wanted to mention something about Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin asking the Wisconsin Supreme Court to clarify whether our state constitution allows for abortion on demand. Tell us about that. Oh, David, we knew this was probably going to come. The minute last year in April that we lost a good conservative jurist, uh, Dan Kelly, lost that judicial race for the seat on the Supreme Court. And that court flipped in August when Janet Protasiewicz, the winner, was seated on the court. And the court flipped 4-3 liberal from 4-3 conservative. We knew it was coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we our, our pre-row abortion ban is is right now on the books. There's been no definitive decision, ultimate definitive decision on whether that can be enforced. There's been an appeal made by the DA in Sheboygan, a good guy. And uh, now he's asked the Supreme Court to take that. But there's been no final decision yet. The court hasn't even said they'll take it. Meanwhile, Planned Parenthood has stepped up. And last week, Actually, earlier this week, they they threw in there a a request, a direct action petition to our state Supreme Court asking them to clarify whether Wisconsin's Constitution included self-determination, which for them includes the right of a woman to have an abortion. And they David, this is just amazing to me the, the what they're using to support their position, of course, that they think it does is the part of our state constitution where it says. We have inherent rights, including the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, they're relying on liberty and pursuit of happiness for that idea of self-determination. How do they get past ignoring the most basic of the inherent rights? Right. That's where they are. To right to life. You you think that would be... uh... Uh, a main focus. But anyway, um, we're going to get to some other stories, too. We've got um, a concerning story about left wing NGOs illegally, you know, getting votes for the left and the Biden administration. They're using federal agencies, at least one for sure, but probably a lot more. And then, um, uh, oh, there's a lawsuit, the Leah Thomas lawsuit against World Aquatics. So we'll get into some more issues with Jelaine Appling when we come back on Worldview Matters. Today's show is brought to you by Harbinger's Daily. World news biblically understood. Stay informed at harbingersdaily.com. All right, friends, if you're listening to our show via audio podcast, you can help the show rise in the rankings by simply putting in a or posting a five star review. And that really does help from what I've been told. So also we're looking for more sponsors, including uh, Harbinger's Daily. We're so thankful for them. But if you would like to get more information on how to sponsor Worldview Matters, uh, we're looking for people that, uh, you know, that believe in the same things we do and want to support us that way. Way, you can send us an email, go to the website worldviewmatters.tv, and our producer will get back to you and you can c- uh, continue that conversation. So, we've got Jelaine Appling here, and we're talking about family issues faith, family, freedom, uh, marriage, uh, citizenship, all these things that, as believers in Christ, it's important to. Uh, be involved with and aware of what's happening not only locally but around the country. So let's go to this lawsuit, Jelaine. Um, So they're holding to biological women only competing in women's sports. This is one of those headlines, one of those stories that I always like to say, what would our great-grandparents think? If they saw this story in this headline, they would probably try to figure out that's got to be, there's got to be some misprint or a typo there, but 
Leah Thomas is the former, uh, was a Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania swimmer that competed against Riley Gaines. Thank you for Riley Gaines. That She's got a great platform now. Tell us about this. Well, and, and this is something that I, I, I was honestly not aware of until a news item caught my, my attention here recently. But apparently because the swim, the, the organ, national organization that governs swimming at a, you know, the high competitive levels, um, they said biological males could not compete in the women's the events, the swimming and diving events. And so um, <laughs> Leah Thomas, who, of course, had won some, you know, one of those one of those competitive events and then was told, well, you can't go any further, basically said, well, I'm going to file a lawsuit. Now, I'm going to I'm going to say this very clearly. This is the way the left goes. OK. They almost always turn to the courts hmm. and there are courts where they can file this kind of lawsuit, David, where they will find a friendly judge to get at least at the early stages of the lawsuit a, a favorable decision. Right. So what happens, though, is, well, do they put an injunction on the uh, the swimming organization's ability to enforce a very reasonable um, rule and, and regulation in their body of athletes? Or will they force that organization to at least temporarily allow biological males to compete in women's sports? Now, you know, and we could talk all day about the unfairness of this. I, I, you know what, David? I don't think you have to go to great grandparents. I think all you have to do is go maybe to grandparents. Because <laughs> even most people's grandparents today would look at this and say, this is unbelievable. Of course, a male should not be participating in women's sports. You know, you know this is just, just another example of the liberals attack on women they're constantly attacking women they do this through their pro their their pro abortion stand their anti life stand through through the sports areas through all kinds of things and and so but leah somebody's funding leah hmm. you know there's a, a wealthy law organization out there who's filed this lawsuit and they just wanted to get it in the system see where they could go with it, it this whole thing's going to go before the supreme court you can just be sure of that. Yeah, they have um, great marketing because what you said was true. They are they are. If you look at what they're doing, they're anti women or anti woman. But they put out there that they are all oh, they're they're pro woman and the, you know about women's rights and everything else. And the way they frame it and they change the the talking points and their narrative that the media puts out. So most people think, well, no, the left is not against women. But oh my goodness, look at what they're doing. So. Let's talk about the courts briefly, Jelaine. In our first segment, you know, we talked about the Wisconsin Supreme Court and how it flipped based on one vote, one election, one, you know, individual, Dan Kelly, you know, not winning that election. So now it's liberal uh, majority. Uh, what can we do like in other states across the country, even in Wisconsin? Is, is there hope or is it going to be a, just a long wait before we have another opportunity to get that back? Because you said something very important. The, the, the left uses the courts and they can almost always find a, a justice or someone that they'll side with because they have that progressive or that liberal worldview. Yeah, because a lot of the judges that are in place now at the federal level are appointed by Obama. Now, yeah. uh, Donald Trump appointed a ton Yes, of more did. conservative just, just judges and justices to our Supreme Court, accordingly. But look, every state is a little different. There are retention votes that happen. There are appointed. There are states where all judges are appointed. They serve a certain amount of term. And mm. there's states like ours where we vote for every level of our judicial branch, from municipal right through our state Supreme Court. So I'm going to talk about Wisconsin because, you know, David, one of the things I've worked for <laughs> all these years is to make sure I'm a voice of hope in the midst of this chaos. <laughs> but, but <laughs> elections matter. They have consequences in every vote and every election matters. So we don't have a Supreme Court justice election this year, but hang on, we have one in 25, we have one in 26, and we have one in 27. The one in spring of 25, which is one year from now, mm -hmm. has one of the most liberal justices in our state Supreme Court up for another 10 year term, Ann Walsh oh. Bradley. There's an opportunity right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and I guess we have to start paying more attention to the local level, as you mentioned earlier, the state elections, the local. We've, we lost that because the media is so good. I think they're evil 
in the way they do this, the marketing of they're so good of making it about the presidency, right? They're putting a, you know, Biden against Trump in this case, I guess. But it, it's always the wrong f- framework because we lose that focus on the local election, the local level, because we're, we're talking about personalities and it shouldn't be about personality, but policies, platforms and procedures. Your thoughts? Oh, I agree with you totally. Uh, and, and again, I'm going to reiterate the most the, the level of government where we have the most impact and that most directly impacts us is local. A good mayor, a good city council, a good school board can make a huge difference. Real change happens from the bottom up, not yeah. from the top down. But I yeah. got to say, too, I forgot to mention, but on April 2nd, we in Wisconsin do have our presidential preference primary. And all of the candidates that will be on our ballot, whether they've withdrawn or not, will be on our ballot. Those will show up on that myvote.wi.gov website when all of that gets posted. Yeah, I just saw this. This is we weren't planning on talking about it, but I I think I just saw this headline somewhere. Um, Illinois, I think they they removed Trump from the ballot. Um, This is going to be a state by state battle, but it's just it's just unbelievable that they've resorted to this now. Um, Just your quick thoughts on that, Jelaine. Well, this is a left using the courts. This is a perfect example of what I just said. Yeah. They have found the courts to be able to do what they can't do through the, the left. Okay, mm-hmm. the liberals aren't getting anything through the state legislature because they have a Republican majority. Now, with our new maps, that may change in January after the November election here. But they found that the courts were generally sympathetic. But what's ironic about Illinois, David, on this is she immediately placed an injunction on her own order. I'm sorry. who? What? Ju- <laughs> judges don't typically do that. But I should hasten to say this issue has been resolved uh, a couple of months ago here in Wisconsin. Trump was allowed to be on the ba- on the ballot, but there was an effort to try to keep him off. And the court okay. said no. OK, um, let's move to this story. I mentioned at the very beginning of the podcast today where the Biden administration is using federal agencies and left wing NGOs. And that means non-governmental organizations, NGOs, uh, to illegally amass Votes, according to this article, there's a group known as as Demos or Demos, D E M O S, and their whole goal is to increase voter turnout and and voters that are committed to racial justice and the, let's see what else economic inequity, debt free college. So we're talking about activism here, Jelaine, because when we hear increase voter turnout or get out the vote efforts, those terms seem benign. But when you talk about what they're doing, where they're doing it, and who they're trying to attract and get out to vote, basically it's the left mobilizing, trying to mobilize an army of social justice activists or leftist voters. So share your thoughts on this concerning story. Okay, first of all, this is a great example of the clash of worldviews. Okay, all the yeah. things that this Demos group stands for is, is anti my biblical worldview. And we as believers need to understand that there are forces out there that are trying to impose a very secular, a very evil worldview on all of us. And they're using every avenue they can. Second thing I want to say quickly, you are right that getting out the vote really is benign, David, and it needs to remain that way. Um, Conservatives need to get out the vote. We need to do everything we can to get people from the pews to the polls. People who have a biblical worldview have a responsibility, a stewardship responsibility to at least vote as a citizen in this country. So inherently, it's not wrong to go and try to convince people to get registered and then take the next step and go vote. The problem, as I see it in this situation is, and I love the lawyer that's cited there from Heritage, uh, he has a great reputation. And if you can pronounce his name, go for it. I, I know his <laughs> name. I know who he is. But but, but he's, his point is that the federal government has no um, authority to, to, to engage and at a grassroots level on registering voters and in get, and encouraging them to vote, whether they're hooking up with an NGO that is left wing or whether they're doing it some other way. He gives a great example in there, David. You know, somebody calls to register for disability benefits or Social Security and they say, oh, oh, by the way, I see you aren't registered to vote. Let me help you. Oh, by the way, you need an absentee ballot. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with an absentee ballot. They just have to be handled right. But but mm-hmm. what you have here is them using the, the the agencies of help to to forward their ideology yeah. and that is fundamentally wrong and i think hans that's his first name i know him i know him by hans um Han, hans the lawyer nails it right there they don't have the funding they haven't been authorized by congress to have the funding to do this and they don't have the legal right to do it 
Well, when I hear that now, 20 years ago, maybe it would have been different. When I hear that now, I'm thinking, well, that's never stopped them before. They don't have the authorization. Well, let me just share, you know, part of the article. Um, Biden issued an executive order stating that federal agencies shall consider ways to expand citizens' opportunities to register to vote and to obtain information about, participate in the electoral process. And um, that we're talking about reaching all levels in every single department of the executive branch telling other departments to come up with a strategic plan to engage in voter registration. And we've, we've got so we've got Democrats and leftists in the government saying this is what we're trying to do. And they, one of the things they do, they, they are against um, um, obtaining absentee ballots. No, they're, they're for absentee ballots. And it's just, it, it just goes gone. It's, a, it's an article. I'm gonna, I think that we put that up already. It's over at the Washington Stand by Dan Hart. So make sure, you, yeah, there it is. Make sure to check that out, guys, because what they're doing is not just getting out the vote. They're recruiting voters that they can either persuade, that they can either influence, or that they know they can count on. Jelaine, your final thoughts, we're running out of time. We, we, you know what? We as conservatives need to be engaged in this same kind of thing in a legal way, not, yes. not having using that, the, the uh, weaponized federal government to do that. That that is an inappropriate. Now, the question is, David, will somebody sue? Hmm. Because I don't know how you stop that unless somebody sues and says he had no right to issue that executive order and to what to kind of utilize the government agencies to to promote his um, his the voters he wants out through the the Biden administration. So but the message to all of us, we got to vote. Yes. And we've got a lot of catching up to do. I'll never forget. I think it was in the 90s that MTV did their whatever, rock the vote or get out the vote. And who do you think they're attracting? The the teenagers and the kids in their 20s. And who do you think they're primarily going to vote for? And they're they're conditioned due to Hollywood and MTV and the music industry and all that to vote for Democrats. So that's how it works. We have to be better. And Jelaine, we don't have enough time to talk about the millions and millions of Christians that do not go from the pew to the polling place to vote. We've got to be better at that. I agree. Um, But thank you for all the hard work you do and the information that you provide for us. And we'll, Lord willing, talk to you again very, very soon, Jelaine. God bless you, sister. I hope so. Thanks, David. God bless you, too. Thanks for your time. All right, uh, guys, go to Wisconsin Family Council, Wisconsin Family Action. That's WI familyaction.org. Thanks again for sharing the podcast. God bless you, friends. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.